Hello all heroes and welcome back to Invincible Guarding the Globe and today we are going to have what is probably one of the more highly anticipated guides on my channel here going over the GDA Ops feature in the game. Before we do that, just to give a little update on my own personal project here, I burned just about every single resource I had but I do have duplicate up to uh, legendary now which is pretty exciting. There was a bundle with like 30 duplicates and 30 Rexplodes and 30 Samsons. It's like, yeah, yeah, I got that. I got that. And it was tasty. It was very tasty. I've got lots of spare duplicates, but I need a few more other fodder items to get another exceptional duplicate so I can get her to exceptional plus and then upgrade this duplicate to legendary plus but we are doing pretty well in that regard. Pretty well, if we're looking at just raw stats. She is lagging behind Invincible, obviously, because Invincible's freaking Invincible. But, all things considered, she's still not doing too bad, honestly. Um, what's probably gonna end up happening is, for my main team, we've of course got Green Ghost and um, Titan there, obviously. I'm thinking I'm gonna ditch Omni-Man for Duplicate because it's becoming very painful to try and figure out how to power up two Earth's Defenders at once. Now, having Duplicate does put Robot in that same situation where I've got to choose between powering up Duplicate or powering up Robot. Uh, the only difference is Robot's a support, and I'm not too worried about him. I mean, that might bite me in the butt later, but I'm powering up Duplicate because I freaking want to. So, just a little update there. Wanted to share that. I have devastated the countryside in order to get her up that high, but we are doing well. Now, GDA Ops. There's two tabs here, GDA Ops and GDA Events. What this is, this is where you will get the majority of the items you need to power up your characters. We're talking the Hero XP, we're talking the Special XP, some of them give gear, some of them give artifact parts. And then sometimes you get special event um, GDA ops like this one, giving artifact parts such as the uh, obedience collar. There's a lot going on and it is not intuitive how they actually work. So we're gonna try and explain that today. So before I say anything else, if you want an extremely detailed resource guide on the GDA Ops and several other things in the game, I am going to leave a Discord link down below in the description to a server run by, I'm trying to get these names right, um, Billy, Billy, I apologize if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, she seems to be I say she, judging by her profile pic, I don't know if it's a he or a she. I, I don't actually know. It doesn't say, but that's okay. I, I, I apologize if I'm getting your name or anything else wrong. I'm really trying here, but I'm just not good at this. Um, but Philly runs the um, server and has massive contributions to it, as well as a few other users, such as Electric Titan um, and several others so i'm leaving that down in the description below any graphs you see me whip up on screen are probably from those users so massive props to them they have done an extreme level of research into this game and it goes far beyond just gda ops breakdowns it's massive how much they have actually put into guides for this game and i would highly recommend that as an easy um just, just an easy way to digest all the information it's so convenient it's so well broken down just go to that discord you will not be disappointed anyways with that out of the way we're now going to talk about these individually first of all we have turning up the heat this one is mostly just gold and quest fodder pretty much if you look at your missions for like your dailies you got like complete gda ops five times stardom five times i mean this one's just a 10 minute little itty bitty thing i mean it, it's it's teeny it's teeny tiny but if we take a look at it here you'll notice 
every single one of the GDA ops, minus a, minus a couple exceptions, we'll talk about that in a second, have ranks. As you get these powered up, the more you get them powered up, the more rewards you get per wave. And when I say wave, what do I mean? Well, when you're actually in the battle, you are basically going to be putting your characters up against an infinite wave of enemies or an infinite number of enemies coming at you in waves like we're showing here. The more waves you clear in the time limit, the more resources you get. Pretty straightforward there. And the farther you go, usually the more difficult they become. So basically, waves are the bread and butter of this whole thing. The more waves you complete, the better. Now, going back to this first one, this one is mostly gold. Like I said, it's mostly just fodder for different um, quests that involve starting GGA ops. Now, these next two are your bread and butter. This one is for hero XP. It's a nice two hour GDA op, pretty tight two hours. And then this one is a four hour GDA op, giving this all important hero special XP. These two are what you want to focus. Hands down, period. These two on a normal day are what you want to focus. They're what you want to rank up. They're, world, you're, they're what you want to put your strongest units in because you will hit walls. You will hit walls on both the hero XP and the hero special XP, which is funny because usually in games, there's like one resource that is just like the wall. But this one seems to kind of go back and forth between the two, which I actually kind of like, if I'm being perfectly honest. It's kind of it's kind of well balanced, which I appreciate that. So these two are your most important. This one is gear. I imagine if you actually take the time to rank it up, I imagine it could actually go somewhere. But there are so many other sources of gear, especially things like alliances, things like the equipment shop that I hesitate to really recommend it, especially since it is an astronomical 12 hours. This one is another one kind of like the first one where it's mostly just mostly just a fodder thing than anything else. I mean, it does give a combination of hero XP and hero special XP, but especially compared to these beefy ones, I don't know if it would really be worth the time and how much you would have to babysit it to make sure you're not losing time. So keep in mind, every minute that you're not doing it, you're not getting resources. So for Rhiannon and Rampage, you'd have to go back to it every 15 minutes. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. This next one is an interesting one. This is heavy. This one specifically gives the access cards used to rank up the GDA ops. I really flip flop on whether or not this one's important to do because frankly, I've been ignoring it in favor of putting my best two teams in the main ones or in some event ones. We'll talk about that later. But it's kind of one of those things where it might be a short term gain for long term pain situation where since I'm not really doing a whole lot, I might start to fall behind in my rank ups. I leave that one up to you. It It's kind of like if it if you do have a third team that's decent, you probably want to put them here so that you can be at least getting some more of that currency. Next, we do have um, everyone who's anyone. This one is mostly focused on these four artifacts the flaxen barrier, the glue gun looking thing, the drone, and the med kit. If you really want them, then hey, you can go for it, but they're far from the most busted of artifacts, and you can kind of, you can kick this one to the curb, honestly. It's not that important, um, especially if you're choosing between one of these two and everyone who's anyone, then yeah, you're going to choose either training gain or downtown destruction, no questions asked. Now, this last one is an interesting one. This one is Schools Out. It does not have any rank ups. However, for the currency item, if you do have one of them, it will actually give you characters. Now, it's not a massive amount. It's usually, if you can make it up to um, wave 100 usually, 
it'll usually spit out about two to three characters. Most times it's gonna be blues, but on the rarest of occasions, you can actually squeak an elite out of this bad boy. Um, just recently, I did get an invincible out of here. You can get some good stuff, but it is very luck based on that one. Most time you're just gonna get food. It is also worth mentioning that this particular one with schools out does have a soft cap and you'll get that sometimes with the more valuable um, GDA ops is it's not technically a stopping point, but like once you get past wave 100 on schools out, you will notice a massive difficulty increase between wave 100 and wave 101. That does not mean that you technically can't, but that's what's gonna stonewall you from doing anything too crazy. So that is the list of all of the main GDA ops. Now, the most common form of events that we tend to see are GDA op events. For example, this one that we have going right now as of time of recording, is focused specifically on getting this particular artifact, the Obedience Caller. It has a pretty decent chance of dropping it as long as you're putting a halfway decent team and clearing a noteworthy number of waves. And this one in particular was important because the Obedience Caller is actually really freaking good. Um, so that was one that when I didn't have the Caller, I prioritized pretty heavily. Additionally, and you can kind of reference previous videos that I've done regarding these events. There are what are referred to as severe risks GDA ops um, that have been corresponding to the new episodes of season two of Invincible that give the coins used to make purchases in the lab here, as well as a chance of straight up characters. It's a low chance. Let's, let's not kid ourselves here. Last time that, they, that it ran, I didn't get a single elite but it does have a chance of dropping a specific elite depending on the actual mission. Finally, I think the most important type of GDA op to reference is um, for events with new characters. Those usually have their own currency and they will give the currency you need to summon on the event shop as well as refresh the event shop. If you want to see examples of that, refer back to my Battle Beast or Alan the Alien videos, and that will specifically show you what I'm referring to when I say event currency from that particular event op. It's kind of one of those things where it's easier to describe it when you actually see it in action, and I think you'd get a lot more value out of those particular videos. So, as far as the event ops go, it really depends. A lot of the times I do prioritize the event ops. This one though, once I actually did get the collar, I kind of put this one back on the back burner in favor of training gain and downtown destruction. But before that, yeah, I was prioritizing this one. Also the severe risk um, GDA ops, the lab coins and even the chance of an elite is just so potent that it I wouldn't I would not ignore that one. I tend to prioritize that one pretty heavily just for the lab coins. And if I get an elite while I'm at it, then hey, that's just a bonus. So as far as the regular GDA ops go, just to kind of break it down, I am gonna put a graph on screen here from the aforementioned Discord server and uh Philly. And they have very nicely ranked all of the GDA ops on what they feel is priority. And I feel like this is pretty accurate actually. So uh, at the very top here, we have downtown destruction and we have training gain your bread and butter. You need them to power up your characters, period. Next, they do have, this is heavy. That's the one that actually gives some more of the access cards used to power up the GDA ops. Honestly, I'm probably going to really regret not farming that one more in the future because, of course, the higher you rank up training gain and downtown destruction, the more resources you get. But you actually need those access cards. So they do have that one ranked third, where if you only have two teams, kind of like me, I really only have two viable teams. You still want to slap them in training gain and downtown destruction. 
but if you are able to cough up a third team or maybe you've got some uh, some spare epics from previous events then this is heavy is probably where you're going to stick them after that the priority really takes a nosedive um turning up the heat is just a 10 minute little thing i mean i guess if you're desperate for the the gold chips then sure and then garden guardians around the globe is just gear there's really there's so many ways to get gear you really don't need to spend 12 freaking hours on that and then reanimate and rampage and everyone who's anyone is they might as well not even exist you unless you are desperate for these artifact parts from everyone who's anyone and even then the artifacts are okay but really not worth sending out your muscle um so yeah that is the description of the gda ops now there's one more thing to talk about and this applies to schooled out and it applies to um the 15 minute event gda ops that come along with new characters i'm gonna put on screen here um the list of ranged characters once again from the discord server there is a strategy because with these 15 minute timers it's tight it's really tight and if you notice here oh look at my two duplicates i love that 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 makes me happy but if you'll notice when they complete a wave they wipe out everybody they've got to go back to their starting points that timer don't stop so that is a factor that's why ranged characters can be so important because they can take out their targets from a distance therefore they don't have to run as far back to get back to um the starting point for the next wave to spawn according to the range list here we do have um robot as one of the best ones conveniently a lot of people are gonna have a robot and then also um sparky dude over here kursk he's one that is actually listed as a pretty speedy boy um just something to kind of keep in mind there and of course there's the other ranged units on the list rex blowed the machine gun mall twin adam eve etc etc that one you can kind of do based on your based on your resources based on what you have but it's very much that's very much getting into stretch goal territory where you were trying to go for maximum optimization so I think I about covered everything with the GDA op. These two, your bread and butter, get the characters when you can, and go from there. And don't stress out too much over it, especially if you are still starting out in the game. Another nice thing is, as you're doing them, there are achievements for them. They were actually recently added. There are progression achievements where when you hit certain waves, you do get gems, and it's a pretty healthy amount, too. Just kind of something to shoot for as you are playing the game. But that is all we have for today. Let me know down in the comments below if this guide helps you out, and we shall see you next time. Have a good one.